So if you guys still have any questions about um, the amniotic versus bone marrow stem cells, any questions about relapsing, any questions about what, it went, what I went through when I did both, okay? Um, let me know. You know, I think I'm one of the few people on earth that has actually gotten both types of stem cells. The bone marrow, which did not work, and the amniotic, which did work. Hi everyone, Edie here. Okay, so a lot of you are asking about my stem cells and um, I have my mask on right now. You know why I have this on? It's because I just got done meditating with Dr. Joe Dispenza uh, on YouTube. Anyway, I got his course and it's amazing. Um, I'll leave some a, a link in the description below, but this mask helps me block out the sun, block out everything, and I also have my earplugs in for my meditation exercises. The reason why is because I'm healing my body with my mind. And let me go ahead and tell you the story. Um, about a year and a half ago, I had uh, my right knee went out. And it's because, um, I don't know, overwork, whatever with my knees and all this. And uh, my mom has really bad knees. And so I figured, well, it probably runs in my family, right? And so eventually my right knee went out. And um, so I went and had... Um, bone marrow stem cells in my right knee and um it worked at first but then they just fell apart again and i think it's because after the age of 50 maybe it's just deemed in my family to have bad knees and so if i put my own stem cells back into my knees again what good does that do if you think i didn't think about that at first right who knew and so I thought, okay, if my DNA says that I'm going to have bad knees after the age of 50, why on earth would I put my own DNA bad knee stem cells back into my knees again? That just doesn't make sense, right? And the doctor said that, um, that it would only be maybe a 60% chance of, of them getting well because I'm older. And so they went out again after about three months and... Um, and it, it, I just did, you know, I was walking this direction and then I walked this direction and then it blew out again. And so um, about six months later, I went in to go see Dr. Dean Jones at Western North Medical Clinic. And I said, um, go ahead and let's do amniotic stem cells. And that took, and I think it was the amniotic stem cells from a baby whom I thank to this day, I don't even know who they are. Um, for giving me their stem cells because even if their knees goes out at the when they reach 50 years old hey I'm gonna be 105 I really don't want to live that long so um, I have a brand new knee okay I can do all kinds of things with this knee now I can run up and down the stairs I can go biking hiking swimming I can squat I can deadlift I can do all this amazing stuff before then every time I would go down those stairs and we have a, a, a little circle uh, stairs. It's like a winding fireplace stair. Fire. Let me just show you. Look at those stairs from hell. Can you see that? I don't know if I can zoom in. But anyway, they're stairs from hell. And um, so I tried. Now it's crooked, but whatever. I tried going up and down those stairs. And every time I went down the stairs, I had to go backwards or I had to sit down and go down because every time, listen, every time I bent my knee before the amniotic stem cells after the bone marrow stem cells, which was so painful, the bone marrow was so painful. I almost died, um, literally. Anyway, my knees felt like a potato chip bag inside the knee, literally. You know how you scrunch potato chips? And every time I would bend my knee, you would hear this scrunch, 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 right? Now listen to my knee, listen. There's nothing, there's nothing. There's no potato chips. So anyway, my knee is perfect. And then um, when I got back from Arizona, I was doing a gig out there dancing and I was sitting in the airplane and I got up out of my chair and my left knee went out. This was back in April. This is about maybe, what, May, June, July, four months ago. Four months ago, five months ago, 
I, uh, I did something to my left knee. I have no idea. It just went out exactly like my right knee. And it felt exactly the same. There was this knocking. There was this potato chip feeling. I knew since it felt exactly the same as my right, the, based on the MRI, I had a torn PCL, torn meniscus, and already the doctors have seen that I had no cartilage on either of my legs, so I was bone on bone. Two doctors before that told me that I had to get um, knees replaced. Both of them said, you need knee replacement surgery. I'm only 54, right? And so, um, but in 10 years, I have to get them again because I guess they wear out or something like that. So at the age of 64, I would have to get knee replacements again. And if I were to live then, 74 years old, I would have to get knee. So I would have to get three sets of knee replacements because they go out every 10 years, right? Unless you die or want to die or will yourself to die because you don't want to go through the surgery again, which is, I think, what a lot of people do. So anyway, I said, okay, you know, screw that. I'm going to go to Dr. Dean again, Dr. Dean Jones, west2north.com and west2northmedicalsolutions.com. And, um, he fixed me up again. I didn't even go to the doctors. I didn't want to waste my time and my space with all this negativity telling me, Edie, you don't have any more cartilage. You need knee surgery. So I said, okay, screw that. I'm going to go to Dr. Jones and I'm going to have him fix me up. So instead of 50 injections like they did at, um, for my bone marrow, he just gave me one injection again in my left knee right here. And it, it's perfect. Listen to my knee. Listen. Look, I can press things, I can run, I can bike, I can hike, all that stuff. So, guys, you know, don't get bone marrow, all right? It just doesn't work, especially if you're after the age of 50. For me, it didn't work for me, okay? I, I cannot believe that I didn't put the puzzle pieces together when I first thought about it. Why would a person inject their own stem cells, which are gonna go out anyway into their own body again, you know? I was thinking, oh, if I get amniotic, who knows what's in that vial? You know, you have all this, this, this stuff. Who knows, you know, that this isn't a murderer rapist that you're putting in your leg and all of a sudden you're gonna become one. No, get rid of all that crap. What you need to remember is, is that the amniotic people who sell stem cells, they want you to get well. Why? Because if you don't, they're gonna go out of business. Already they're up against the American Medical Society. They're, against all the, uh, they're up against all the insurance companies that will not cover their work. Their shit better work. You know, excuse me for whatever. Their stuff better work. Their amniotic, embryonic, whatever, st baby stem cells better work. Because if it doesn't work, they're out of business, right? And so, what really upsets me is that insurance companies will be more than happy to pay $30,000, 15,000 per knee for new, brand new metallic knee replacements so I can be like the Terminator, you know? But guess what? I'll be back in 10 years to get brand new $30,000 knee replacements again and I'll be back again in 10 years later to get more knee replacements. I don't know if I could handle that. I don't, I just don't know. So anyway, um, people have asked me online, you know, Edie, I don't know if this is working, this really hurts. Okay, the first time you get your amniotic stem cell injection, okay, it hurts that night, okay, because all those little stem cells in there are going and they're working, working, working to fix and repair and become something. Um, I was rock watching Dr. Bruce Lipton, who is like the father of amniotic stem cell research. He's really good on YouTube. He was talking about he took just normal cells, normal cells, put them in a Petri dish with, next to a piece of bone, and they became more bone. He put them in a Petri dish next to a heart, and it became more heart or a muscle or more blood or whatever, right? So the stem cells don't know what they want to be yet when they grow up, unless they're influenced and they see something that they're right next to and they will become that thing, right? Now, I don't know how it starts when you're a baby, how you become, but they just know to grow to become something or whatever they're next to, right? 
And so when they put that single injection into my knee, they put it very, very deep in the knee and the stem cells started moving around. They're supposedly supposed to last nine months actively. And that kind of makes sense because that's the, 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 what is it, the gestation or the growth period for a baby, right? And so those little stem cells are still in my knee. And so when they were hurting that night, instead of bitching and moaning and calling Dr. Dean and saying, oh my God, this hurts so bad, right? What I did was I loved them. And, and I know it's mental and I know you're gonna think I'm crazy, but you know what, that's why I meditate, right? And I was sitting there going, okay, I love you stem cells. I want you to become whatever you need to become. I started massaging them. I started, you know, it, it really hurt. And you can take a Tylenol or whatever, but I don't really do medication. So I just, you know, white knuckled it. And so I was like rubbing them and loving them and telling them to do their job and to become and create and to grow and whatever they're next to become cartilage, become meniscus, become a PCL, you know, whatever else is in there that I don't know about, just become it, right? And do your job, do your job, do your job. And you know what? They did their job. And I kept every night rubbing and rubbing and loving them and sending them love, right? It only hurt the first night and then that was it. The pain was gone. And so, um, unlike the, amne the, the bone marrow that hurt for like a freaking three weeks and I was in the hospital and I, I just couldn't take the pain and they gave me a Percocet and I almost died because I told them I was allergic to Vicodin. They didn't realize that Percocet was in the Vicodin family and I literally stopped breathing for four minutes or five minutes or whatever until my mom hit my chest and gave me mouth to mouth resuscitation because she's a nurse. Of course, you'll see that in my other videos. But anyway, um, and no, I wasn't dehydrated because I was drinking water and orange juice the whole time. So that wasn't it. It was just, um, they, they must have injected me so many times. I still have a video of that. I'm tempted to put it on YouTube. But um, it looked like knitting needles that they were injecting in my knees. And it was just, they were so freaking swollen. And, and the, the bone marrow, I was awake the whole time. They said that they have to put sometimes people under with anesthesia in order to get through the, the, the procedure. And I was like, Jesus, you know, this really hurts. That was the bone marrow stem cells. But when I did the amniotic stem cells, one injection, I drove myself to the clinic. It was like getting a flu shot. In fact, it even felt really good because when they injected me at the amniotic place at Dr. North's West to North, they, the, the fluid actually provided a little cushion where my cartilage used to be. And so when I got off, I'm thinking, oh my God, my knees are cured, this is working. But <laughs> the doctor said, whoa, Edie, whoa, it's just a little cushion in there that's where your cartilage used to be that's no longer rubbing, you know, so relax. And he was right, because after about two, three days, it, it slowly dissipated and then I started to feel a little rub, you know. That's why I thought, oh no, it's not working. But I had to focus in my mind and say, yes, it's working, yes, it's working. And so um, for those of you that have gotten amniotic stem cells and you feel like, oh my gosh, after four weeks, I don't feel any new thing. All of a sudden it's hurting again. It's your diet. Okay, now let's talk about diet for a sec. Um, I know Dr. Dean doesn't like for me to talk about this, but I'm going to talk about it because this is what I did and this is what made all the difference in the world. Okay, I became basically vegan. All right. And... Um, I started, I, I looked online and I said, okay. Now the reason why I'm in a wheelchair, and I'll show you another reason why. The reason why I'm in a wheelchair is because I broke my heel. Okay. okay. This is my foot today. Ah, I broke my heel. And so I had surgery couple about a month or so ago but it's getting better so we'll go into that later i'm wearing these toe things because i mean just think about it the stem cells work so well let me see if i can straighten this out the stem cells work so well to the point of where i was on a freaking ladder going up and down the stairs right putting away suitcases <laughs> Then I was pushing those suitcases and I didn't, and, and our floor is a little unlevel and the ladder was going back and forth and I did one final push 
and I kicked the ladder out from under me. I was putting them in the attic, right? I was going up and down the ladder, up and down the ladder, and that's how great my knees felt, right? Then I did one final push, and I fell off the ladder straight down on my right heel, and I shattered my heel to a level four break considered inoperable, but they didn't realize until they went in, it was a level three break. Level one means um, that it's okay, you know, an operation will work. Level two, it's uh, iffy if the operation will work. Level three, barely the operation is gonna work. Level four, the operation's not gonna work. So they deemed me a level three. I told them I had a great attitude. I said, you know, I'm on a healing diet right now because of my knees and basically, the, the diet, I thought, you know, I'll be able to heal out of this knee thing, no problem, I'll, I, it'll be great, and that's what I'm still continuing to believe. So, um, let me go back to the diet, that's a small digression. Anyway, um, I started watching Chef AJ on YouTube. Chef AJ is a person that will make eating solely rice, potatoes, vegetables, fruit, um, legumes and everything that's not processed, nothing from a package, nothing that has a label on it, and nothing that's from an animal, including honey. Um, she makes that stuff taste awesome because I tried being a vegan before, it was really tough, and I thought, God, how am I gonna survive? You know, no restaurants offer vegan food, you know? And so um, I started watching Chef AJ on YouTube, and I'll leave a link to my living document below on how I am progressing in my healing staging stages, right? And so, I know, right, it's a bummer. A year ago, my right knee goes out. Five months ago, my left knee goes out. <laughs> Two months ago, I break my heel. It's like, I almost, I almost didn't want to do this video. I thought, fuck, you know, I don't, want to, I don't want to consider myself like accident prone because I'm really athletic, you know, and to have, to have to go through this, I figured, you know, there has to be some reason. So maybe that's why I'm doing this video is to show you guys, hey, you know what? What's interesting is that my knees, my left knee is now getting a lot more rest, probably the rest that it needed, you know, because I was already starting to teach after two months. I won't lie, okay? I, I was supposed to not st start doing anything for at least four to five months, six months, whatever. You're supposed to wear a brace. I don't wear a brace because I hate braces. And I didn't wear a brace for my right knee and I was fine. So anyway, um, I think that maybe, you know, this happened because my left knee needed a little bit more time to heal from, from whatever I did to it. I didn't hesitate at all to go see the stem cell people on the left knee. But anyway, I'm digressing. Um, not really, because if you wait too long, like I did with my right knee, I waited so long because I was so afraid. Oh, what if it's not real? What if the stem cells don't work? What if it's from a crazy person? What if there's no stem cells in the fluid? All this stuff. And I was fearing. And so this knee got worse and worse and worse. If you guys want to go get your stem cells done, and if you're thinking, and if you're on the fence, don't stay on the fence for very long because it's just going to get worse and it's going to take that much more time to heal, okay? What I did with my left knee was a completely different experience than my right knee. As soon as my left knee went out, bam, the next day, I was at Dr. Dean's office, and I said, do this, Dr. Dean Jones, do this, Denver, Colorado, okay? Um, <laughs> he went in there, and um, they injected the, and it was, and I was like, oh my gosh, in two weeks, I was already great, right? And um, I could start to teach beginners, but not advanced people. Now, when I changed my diet, let's go back to the diet. When I changed my diet, um, after the right knee. I was like 80% at eight months, right? Eight months after the amniotic stem cell, I was still 80, 85%. And I thought, God, what is it gonna take to get this thing 100% again, right? And I started watching Chef AJ. I started becoming more and more vegan. It was a process over time, right? And um, it worked, it worked. Once I got rid of the cheese, the dairy, the salt, the sugar, all oils, including olive oil and coconut oil, they are not good for you. Oil is oil, it's processed, it's, it's 4,500 calories for one tablespoon, right? No, a, a, a pound, sorry. But um, if you get rid of, we call it the sofas, sofas diet, no salt, no oil, no flour, no alcohol or animals or animal products, no sugar. 
sofas, get off your sofas. And you start watching Chef AJ on YouTube, um, and I also have a link as well to my living document that I'm doing to give you certain links and, and certain recipes, excuse me, and certain um, things that you, you need to do to heal your body, to become a healing machine, that's when the magic happened. That's when I was like, oh my gosh, I feel amazing. You know, even my, my mom, she has five kinds of arthritis, right? And I was like, oh my God, I don't want to get any of that. And so I, I could tell in my fingers and my wrists and everything, my joints were starting to ache, you know, over time. I thought, fuck, I'm going to get the same thing she has. But as soon as I changed my diet, all that went away. It all went away. Look, I can do this, I can do that without hurting. I can put both hands behind my back and lift up without hurting. I can move my knees without hurting. My toes don't hurt. By the way, why I do this is because this helped plantar fasciitis. Yes, I had plantar fasciitis before I had my knees done. And check this out. I switched from having shoes that were like this, right? Shoes that, that squished your toes in to, sh to Vibram five fingers. And that helped expand and got rid of both bone spurs I had on the bottom of my feet, okay? Bottom of my feet, I had a bone spur here and there are two bone spurs and my entire plantar fasciitis, or my, my plantar fascia right there was aching. It felt like every time I got out of the, out of my bed, I felt like I was um, walking on glass, all right? Have you ever had that feeling? You get out of bed and all of a sudden you start stepping on glass pieces. That's exactly how I felt for about, I would say two years. And I would roll on these roller balls, you know, these spiky things, I still have them here. I don't use them anymore. But I'll tell you what, the combination of the amniotic stem cell, which I think opened up something, I don't know what it was, that allowed the blood to flow through to my feet, it started to heal my, the plantar fasciitis. I don't wanna say my plantar fascia, the plantar fascia. And now I don't have it anymore, okay? I started wearing Vibram Five Fingers, I started eating better, okay? Um, I just became just a different person, you know? And it really, really helped. Now, the only thing that's holding me back right now is the pain from the shattered calcaneus, okay? I'm wearing these because I'm, I'm in the middle of healing right now and I want these to heal open so that I have a lot of blood flow through here to heal the heel, okay? Um, if you wanna look at the the progress or what happened, go to salsafreak.com slash broken hyphen heel, H-E-E-L, okay? And you're gonna see the whole story there because I really don't like to go back in time and think about it and relive it. And every time somebody texts me or calls me, Edie, how you doing, how you doing, what happened, what happened? I just said, fuck it, I'm gonna make a page online that just says everything that happened to me so I don't have to go back in the past and relive it because I wanna live a great new future. I don't wanna be living in the past because all the pain and shit comes back and it just pisses me off, right? And it gets me into this crazy ass mood and then I have to go back to meditating to get rid of all that. And you know, the pain sometimes gets so bad, I can't sleep at night. I couldn't sleep at all last night. That's probably why I have rings under my eyes. But yeah, it's been a couple months now and um, it still feels like an alligator is chomping at my foot and my foot is inside of a beehive and the bees are stinging it. And every time I stretch my leg, I feel like these rubber bands are pulling and they're snapping, okay? So that's a really brief synopsis of what I've been going through as far as my broken heel. But the knees, the knees are fine. I can do bicycles. There's no more potato chips. And I can also get on both knees to do tasks. Like I just put on a pair of knee pads, right? And I can do laundry, I can walk around the house. I'm basically crawling on my knees because, unless, because I have a wheelchair right now. See my wheelchair? My wheelchair is because I can't walk on one leg. And I also have uh, one of these. I opted out of the, the um, what do you call those crutches? Because they just scared the shit out of me and I didn't want to do crutches and I said, no way. I also have this knee thing 
this knee thing. I should, maybe I should show it to you. This is really getting long, isn't it? Let me show you the knee thing. It's called a knee. There's my thing to the shower. This is called an iWalk 2.0. And it's basically this thing where you put one leg on it, you put your knee here, you put one leg on it, and you walk around. Okay, I'm sure you can look that up. But here's, that's what I've been having to do. And there's the, the unforgiving staircase. And, um, but anyway, yeah, taking a shower is an entirely new experience on one leg. So I've been basically hopping around on one leg. I cannot put any weight on my leg for four months. And so I'm hoping to make it three months. Why is if I meditate, 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 and get it down to three months. But I don't want to push it, you know. So Dr. Joe Dispenza is amazing. He really teaches you how to meditate. I couldn't meditate to save my life. Why? Because I'm working 20 hours a day as an entrepreneur still, even though I'm here at home, um, it's still pretty bad, you know? So anyway, what do I want to say? So if you guys still have any questions about um, the amniotic versus bone marrow stem cells, any questions about relapsing, any questions about what, it went, what I went through when I did both, okay? Um, let me know. You know, I think I'm one of the few people on earth that has actually gotten both types of stem cells. The bone marrow, which did not work, and the amniotic, which did work, okay, for my knees. And I thank God that my knees are well. You know what else I thank God for? I thank God that I changed my diet. Because, check this out, I've had bad knees for a year and a half now, okay, except they got better, thank God. And now I broke my heel. And I haven't gained any weight because I'm eating an unprocessed diet of just a lot of potatoes, a lot of yams, a lot of rice, no oil or salt, no flour, no sugar, no alcohol. Well, I don't drink anyway, so I, haven't, I hate drinking because I can't spin and I can't dance and all that. And I can't wait to get back to dancing again, teaching, not necessarily dancing, but teaching. Um, I haven't gained any weight because I'm on this new new life plan of, of basically veganism, right? And I think that um, it also helps my attitude. You know, I don't have to restrict my calories. I can eat as much as I want, whenever I want, um, except three or four hours before I go to sleep. If I eat, if I eat late before I go to bed at night, um, it's, it's uh, I don't sleep all night, okay? So anyway, I just have to, learn how to get rid of this pain in my heel all right my heel this is the one that's all messed up and um it was pretty bad in the beginning but let me show you the i know you're gonna freak out i think i already showed this to you that's the that's the scar and this is how it is after when did i have the surgery on june 24th it is now august 16th so about a month and a half or so ago but it's the flap is healing well the doctor was surprised that, because they had to literally take this whole thing out and push it up and go in there and basically with cadaver bones, cadaver powder, they had to go in and rebuild my heel in addition and they had to fuse it because it was so bad. He said it was so bad, this was his exact words, I'm not kidding. He said that if he had to do this, it took him three hours. If, they had, if he had to do this surgery when he was an intern, he would never have become um, an orthopedic surgeon. <laughs> and I was thinking, oh my God. And he said that it was the roughest surgery he's ever had to do. When he went in there, they didn't realize that the whole thing was a powder. It was just shattered. And I could feel that there were little bone fragments protruding out of my heel um, from this fall. I didn't realize how bad it was. I did not realize that until when I looked at it and my whole foot was this way and I thought, oh my God, I'm here alone in the mountains by myself. My cell phone is clear outside in my car. I was clear out in the laundry room. And I thought, I don't have any way to call anybody and nobody's around. It's not like I can crawl to the neighbor's house, right? Because my neighbor is a mile away. And so I thought, oh shit. So I took my foot that was this direction. It was severely dislocated, right? And I just looked at it and I thought, fuck. So I took it and I 
rammed it back into place as hard as I could. I just took that sucker and I went bam, and then I hit it on the floor as hard as I could to knock it back in place, and then it went back, right? But, and I thought, oh my God, I just dislocated my foot. But then the pain, ah, oh, I was crawling all the way from the laundry room, all the way across there to my car, across the rocks, on my hands and knees, and I was wearing shorts, and um, it was just horrible to try to get to my phone. And I don't even remember where my phone was. I just so happened to find it in my car. So then I called. But anyway, that's a whole other video um, about my heel. But the doc said that this part right here, the flap, most people, usually that flap rots away and you have to peel it off and then you grow new skin and there's like this huge scar. He said he was really, really happy that my flap is not falling off, that it's, it's, it actually adhered back. And I really believe that's because of my diet, to, believe, to, to be honest with you, okay? It's the vegan diet that is really, it's this healing diet that is making me whole again. So like Humpty Dumpty, everything's coming back together again, everything's piecing back together again, and I know this video is like really super long, but um, that is basically my situation at this point. Um, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to email me if you want, and um, I will be more than happy to answer your questions in other videos or um, in person. Okay, so this is Edie the Salsa Freak pulling herself back together again in the high mountains of Colorado. See you later. Bye.